this is Terry Wager. Uh, the date today is August 12, 2015. Um, I am a victim of a Portland Police and Multnomah County Sheriff's sting operation, of which, uh, and that sounds official, doesn't it? But it, by, it's by no measure of the words official. And the reason why is because it was very personal on their part, and uh, they had recruited pretty much everybody on my wife's side of the family, as well as my wife, into the sting. And my wife, in turn, uh, my wife, Joan Wager, in turn, recruited uh, our daughters into the sting. And they were setting me up for a series of crimes. Um, I have reason to suspect that my wife and her side of the family uh, for many years have been civilian sting ops before they were targeting me in this sting and that they just never uh, made it known to me, but I have reason to suspect that they were. Uh, uh, I have me, myself, and everybody on my side of the family um, have been targeted on and off all my life anyway, in sting, police and county sheriff sting operations. Uh, I wasn't aware of it when I was a young kid, uh, but I found out about it later. Um, it's very hard to explain uh, the victimization uh, that me and every member of my side of the family have uh, gone through and suffered over these police and county sheriff sting operations because uh, uh, me and my whole side of the family knew nothing about police and county sheriff sting operations back in the 70s and that's when uh, me and my side of the family first became targeted in uh, police and county sheriff sting operations. Uh, we was unaware of it at the time. We didn't know anything about police sting operations or uh, police and county sheriff sting tactics. Um, <coughs> I didn't realize until I was around the age of ten and a half years old that uh, me and my entire family were victim of a murder conspiracy and that uh, organized people in law enforcement and their civilian buddies and their civilian relatives and pretty much anybody and everybody that pals around with and is connected to law enforcement were targeting me and my family in the 70s in a sting operation. I was a kid back then in the 70s. Uh, I, I knew virtually nothing about covert crime or covert sting tactics and uh, I knew nothing about uh, sting operations and uh, me and my entire family was totally and completely destroyed and victimized by a sting operation. Uh, no trials took place, no testimony takes place, nothing like that. It's just being literally, me and my entire family were just being ganged up on by organized people in law enforcement and by their civilian relatives and their civilian buddies and their civilian uh, girlfriends. And they were just using organized uh, uh, tactics where they were staging crimes themselves for the uh, purpose of framing and blaming uh, people in my side of the family. And these were the tactics that they were using um, in the 70s. Uh, and this, these tactics went, uh, they, did a, they did a great deal of staging uh, for the purpose of getting their targets into incriminating situations that make their targets look bad. Um, uh, this, this, the amount of staging that the sting ops use and is 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 massive, and uh, they take their time at it. Um, they're methodical in their staging. In almost every aspect of their staging in their sting operations, these sting ops are heavily reliant on photogenic photos. They're constantly taking photogenic photos of their targets and uh, they're constantly trying to get their targets into incriminating situations and then they take photogenic photos of their targets 
while their targets are in these incriminating situations, of which it's the sting ops themselves that get the targets into those situations. And that's why I refer to it as staging, because it's the sting ops themselves that set the stage, and then they, they, they create the scenario, and then they get their target into that scenario, and then they just start taking photogenic photos. And this is the kind of shit that they were doing back in the 70s, and uh, to me and my family, and uh, throughout the... Uh, the reason uh, they weren't targeting me and my family in the 70s because any of us did anything wrong, uh, they were targeting me and my family because the Multnomah County Sheriffs and their civilian relatives, the Dunham family, were setting up a neighbor of ours as a pedophile, and they were using a Multnomah County Sheriff officer as a double, and they were using the Dunham family, the mother of the Dunham family, and the, and the children of the Dunham family to pose with this double uh, the, Dunham, the mother of the Dunham family brought her children as well as neighbor children in the neighborhood that she rounded up to that double for the purpose of posing for photogenic photos. And the double was a Multnomah County Sheriff Officer and the double was inside the house of the target. Uh, where the target was at the time, I don't know. The target could have been at work. The target may have been out of town on vacation. Uh, the target may have already been incarcerated, or the target may have already been murdered by the county sheriffs. Either way, the target was not in uh, his, his own home at the time. It was a Multnomah County Sheriff officer in that home that was acting as a double of the person that lived there. And it was the mother of the Dunham family that brought her children, and, as well as neighbor children, that she rounded up to that house and ordered those children uh, to go into that yard. And the moment the children went into the yard of that house, that's when the county sheriff officer started tossing candy bars at the children. And it was the mother of the Dunham family that was snapping photogenic photos of her children as well as the neighbor children she rounded up. Uh, she was snapping photogenic photos of the children picking up those candy bars. And it was a county sheriff officer that was tossing the candy bars at the children. Now, that was 1971. I happened to be one of the neighbor children. Darling, the mother of the Dunham family, Darling Dunham, rounded up for this operation. I happened to live just two houses away from the Dunham family at the time. Uh, the target that they're framing literally lived just one block away from me. And Darlene Dunham lied to my mother and made up false pretenses in order to gain access to me for this operation. Uh, Darlene Dunham told my mother she was taking her children to the park and wanted to know if she could take me along with her. That sounded innocent enough, and uh, because she was a nearby neighbor, and because she had kids of her own that was, you know, like near the same age as me, um, my mother didn't think anything of that, and she consented. So uh, I'm technically at that point being babysitted by Darlene Dunham at this point, at Darlene Dunham's request. But Darlene Dunham didn't take me and her children to the park at all. Darlene Dunham took me and her children to a house that was a block away. And they used me in this operation. I'm only six years old at the time. I'm completely clueless as to what the hell is going on. I was under the impression she was taking me to the park. So when she took me to that house instead and ordered me and her kids to go into that yard, from that point forward, I was asking questions because I was confused as to what the hell was going on. Now keep in mind, I'm only six years old. I know nothing about sting operations. I know nothing about covert crimes. I didn't even know what the hell a Multnomah County Sheriff Officer even was. So when I saw the County Sheriff Officer in his uniform inside that house and saw him tossing the candy bars at us, I didn't even realize what that uniform even represented. I had no clue. But technically, I'm being babysitted by Darlene Dunham at this point, and uh, it's a 
the year is 1971. Uh, I'm only six years old at the time. I don't back talk my elders, and technically I'm being babysitted by a darling Dunham. So I just did as I was told. But I never stopped asking questions. And the reason why I was asking questions was because I was confused about what the hell was going on. Um, a lot of people don't remember things that happen when they're only six years old. Uh, you have to understand that uh, for me that was a very unusual day for me. It, for me, it was an unforgettable day. For one thing, it was my introduction day to the Dunham family. That's the day the Dunham family was introducing themselves to me, and I introduced myself to them. Uh, Darlene Dunham's kids were introducing themselves to me, and I introduced myself to them. They told me their names. I told them my name. Uh, they told me how old they were. I told them how old I was. And... Uh, and this was on the walk when I thought I was being taken towards, you know, to the park. Um, now, this situation where this county sheriff officer was tossing candy bars at us, this went on for about five minutes, five, ten minutes. And throughout the entire course of it, uh, Darlene Dunham, the mother of the the mother of the children that she brought there, as well as the neighbor children that she brought there for this for this uh, street theater performance that they're putting on. Uh, she was across the street on the sidewalk with a big, giant metal green camera in her hand. And she was snapping photogenic photos of me and of her children as we were picking up the candy bar. Now, I initially did not pick up candy bars at all, initially. The Dunham family's children were immediately picking up candy bars, and they were grinning and laughing and smirking and playing and, for the most part, celebrating. And I was confused and did not pick up the candy bars. And I looked over at Darlene Dunham, who was across the street, and asked the question, uh, am I supposed to pick these up? And that's when I noticed Darlene Dunham was holding a big, giant, all green, all metal uh, camera in her hands. And she was snapping photogenic photos of me and of her children as those candy bars were being picked up that the county, the county sheriff officer was tossing at us. Darlene Dunham lowered the camera from her face, and that's when I noticed she was grinning from ear to ear. And she said, yeah, pick up the candy bars. So I'm like, uh, okay. So I'm picking up the candy bars, but I don't understand why. I don't know why we're doing this. I have no clue what's going on. What is the purpose of this? Is this some sort of a strange uh, hybrid of Halloween or something? I didn't understand what was going on. I was confused by this. Um, when the county sheriff officer was done tossing the candy bars, uh, he said, that, that's it, there's no more. And then he shut the window. And then from that, right after he shut the window, that's when Darlene Dunham yelled at her children and me. For, she was across the street, and she yelled at her kids and me to come back to her. So we headed across the street to go back to Darlene Dunham. And uh, they were, uh, at this point, celebrating. Darlene Dunham and her children were openly celebrating and were laughing and were smirking and we're in a celebration mode, and Darlene Dunham started walking um, me back to my house. Um, the children of the Dunham family at this point were openly referring to the person that lives at that house as a pedophile. And they flat out said that word. You have to understand uh, they were laughing, they're grinning, they're smirking, and they're celebrating while they're referring to the person that lives at that house as a pedophile. Now, I'm only six years old. I know nothing about police sting operations. I know nothing about covert crime. 
I didn't even know what the hell Multnomah County Sheriff Officer even was yet. And I didn't even know what the word pedophile even meant. So I asked them. I was, I'm still confused and I'm still asking questions. So I said, I asked them genuinely and honestly, I asked them, what's a pedophile? And Darlene Dunham and her children, they just grinned at me, kind of like an evil grin. And they kind of looked at each other and they grinned at each other. And then they just didn't answer the question at all. They ignored my question. <laughs> and that's when Darlene Dunham, the mother of the Dunham family, she just started talking about, she started saying to her children, she said, after we drop Terry off back home, we're going to go out for a pizza. Because keep in mind, they're still in a celebration mode. They're, they're like celebrating. They're acting like they just, a, a great thing has just happened. And they're in a celebration mode. Um... And I was confused by all this. Now, keep in mind, I'm only, this is 1971. I'm only six years old. Uh, I didn't understand what was going on. When they, said, when they said the word pedophile, I asked them, what does that word mean? They didn't answer that question at all. They ignored that question. But then when, uh, when Darlene Dunham changed the subject by telling her children, after we drop Terry off, we're going to go out for a pizza. Uh, after they said that, I said to them, uh, what's a pizza? And you have to understand, this is 1971. I'm only six years old at the time. Uh, in 1971, me and my entire family didn't even own a TV yet. <laughs> so I never even had TV until later that year or earlier uh, the next year. It was either late 1971 or early 1972 when me and my family um, first got a working TV. Uh, because as, as, when I was six years old, I was never uh, really, I was never really uh, had a TV. So I never, I didn't even have commercials to defer to as far as knowing things. So I didn't even know what the heck a pizza was. You know, I knew what a hamburger was. I knew what French fries was. I knew what a hamburger joint was. I knew what a restaurant was. Uh, but I'd never heard of a pizza. So I asked them, what's a pizza? And they spent most of the walk walking me back to my house, explaining to me what a pizza was. And they were using that. Uh, so they spent a great deal of time explaining what a pizza was. But they sure as hell did not want to explain to me what was going on. Now, it's while they were explaining to me what a pizza was, that's when I noticed Darlene Dunham was pulling out the photogenic photos out of this very large, all-metal, all-green uh, camera. And she was stuffing those photogenic photos in an envelope. And the envelope was a yellow envelope. And I noticed there was a big round yellow seal on that camera. And I was very curious about that camera because it was the largest camera I had ever seen in my entire life. It was a really big camera uh, from my perspective. I was very curious about it. Now keep in mind, I'm unaware that these people just committed felony crimes and that they're framing a neighbor. I'm completely unaware of this and uh, ignorant of it. I'm just not old enough to have enough wisdom to understand or comprehend what I am witnessing. And I, I, not when I, I noticed when she took out those photos out of the camera and she was stuffing the photos in an envelope, I noticed the seal that was on the camera. She was literally right behind, walking right behind me as she was stuffing uh, those photogenic photos in an envelope. And I happened to turn around, you know, and happened to notice that she was doing this. And that's when I noticed the seal on the camera. Now, it was, a, it was all, it was a round seal, a very large, relatively large seal. Keep in mind, the camera was very large. It was the seal was all yellow. Um, I didn't. I was only six years old at the time. I wasn't even in uh, grade school yet at all, so I didn't know how to read. So I couldn't read. There was words on the seal, but I couldn't read it. Um, but I never forgot what the seal looked like. Never. I never forgot what it looked like. It's like looking at a Nike swoosh symbol on a tennis shoe. You know, you may not know what it represents, but the moment you see it, uh, you never forget what it looks like. 
Well, that's how it was for me when I saw that seal. I didn't know what the seal represented. I didn't know what that seal that was on the camera represented. But I never fucking forgot what it looked like. I asked Dar I was curious about that camera, so I asked Darlene Dunham if, if I could hold the camera for her, because I was curious. I wanted to know how much it weighed. Because I was curious, because I'd never seen a camera that large before. And Darlene Dunham told me, uh, no, this is not her camera. She, it's, it's somebody else's camera. She can't, she can't loan it to other people. And uh, that's when uh, I asked her, um, you know, if I could have one of those photogenic photos that she was stuffing in the, the envelope. And because uh, I knew she was taking photogenic photos of me and of her own children picking up those candy bars. So I thought it would be, you know, nice and cool to have a, one of those photos for myself just because I knew she was taking photos of me. I knew I was on those photos because I witnessed her snapping the photogenic photos and she was snapping photos of me. At, she was aiming the camera at me and at her own kids. So um, I knew I was on the photo, so I thought it would be nice if I could have one. And she told me, no, th these are special photos, uh, maybe some other time. So this is what uh, the Dunham family was telling me on the walk back to my home. Now, uh, when they dropped me off at my house, the Dunham family were heading towards their house after they dropped me off at my house. I walked in through my door, I had a fistful of candy bars in my hand, and I happened to be munching on one of the candy bars. And my mother was quite shocked and surprised to see me with uh, all these candy bars. And she said to me, where did you get all those candy bars? Now, you have to understand, I'm only six years old at the time. Uh, I know nothing about covert crime. I know nothing about sting operations. I'm unaware of the fact yet that the Dunham families and the county sheriffs framed a neighbor. I'm not aware of it yet. I'm not aware that they used me in a, in a sting operation for the purpose of framing somebody. I'm not aware of that at all. Uh, my perception of what took place at the time, my six-year-old perception of what took place at the time was extremely limited. Uh, my perception of what took place was, nice lady takes me for a walk, nice lady takes us to meet nice man, nice man gives us candy bars, nice lady takes photos of it, and then nice lady takes me home again. That was my limited six-year-old perception of what took place. And the Dunham family were openly referring to the person that lived at the house as a pedophile. And I had no clue what that word stood for or represented. But I do know the Dunhams were referring to that person that lived there as a pedophile. So when my mother asked me, where did you get all those candy bars? Uh, this is based on my limited perception as to what happened and based on what I know about the person that gave me the candy bars, here is how I answered the question. I said, oh, they took us to meet a nice pedophile. He gave them to us. That's how I answered my mother's question. Now, you can imagine the reaction that my mother had after hearing me say that. Uh, my mother's jaw dropped. A total look of shock and horror was on her face. Her jaw literally dropped, and she was horrified at what I said. <clears throat> and she immediately got angry, and she said, you stay right there. And my mother bolted out the door, chasing after the Dunham family. Now, keep in mind, I'm only six years old. Uh, my understanding of what took place was extremely limited. And I'm now under the impression that, gee, my mom, I, I, I'm unaware of what that word pedophile even means. For all I knew, that could have been an occupation. Uh, if, if they'd have said that uh, he was an astronaut, well, I wouldn't have known what the word astronaut meant either. So I would have said, oh, nice astronaut gave us the candy bars. 
because I assumed it was some sort of an occupation. That's what I assumed that word pedophile meant. I assumed it was some sort of an occupation. <clears throat> I had no clue what the word meant or represented. I thought it was some sort of like a mailman or, a, you know, a, you know, some sort of an occupation. That's what I thought the word meant. So when my mother got mad and she bolted out the door to had to go after the Dunham family, I thought I was in trouble because my mother was mad at what I just said. So I thought, gee, am I in trouble? Am I going to get spanked for something? Did I do something wrong? I was so I was even more confused. I'm confused by what the Dunham family did and, and what this uniformed county sheriff officer did, and I'm still not yet aware he's a county sheriff officer. And now I'm confused by my own mother's behavior at this point. And I'm thinking, well, gee, I must be in trouble. I must have did something wrong. Um, so I'm even more confused. Now, my mother was gone for about 15, 20 minutes. And when she came back to the house, um, she didn't say a word to me at all in regards to what happened and she didn't question me at all in anything that happened she just came home and she seemed satisfied with whatever explanation the Dunham family gave her now I'm going to have to assume that the county sheriff officer that was in that house acting as the double was with after me and the Dunham family left that house, I'm going to have to assume the county sheriff officer drove to the Dunham family's house and was waiting for the Dunham family to arrive so that he could retrieve the photogenic photos as well as his camera. Because the seal that was on that camera was a Multnomah County Sheriff's seal. And I'm going to have to assume that when my mother confronted the Dunham family, that they were in the presence of this Multnomah County Sheriff Officer who's in uniform. And that they told, they told my mother some bullshit story. And that my mother just fell for it. And apparently was satisfied with whatever bullshit explanation that they gave her. And I'm under the impression that the Dunham family, as well as the County Sheriff Officer, told my mother to not question me about it because I don't know what's going on and it is best if I don't know what's going on. And for that reason, I'm under the impression that that's the reason why when my mother came back home, she seemed satisfied with whatever explanation they gave her and she didn't feel the need to question me any further in regards to what happened. Now, I wasn't aware of it then Looking back on it, it's pretty goddamn fucking obvious that's what fucking happened. Um, but back then, I was, I, you know, you have to understand my perception of what took place. I was only six years old. I, I wasn't mature enough to understand that I'm witnessing covert crime taking place and that it's organized people committing the covert crimes and that they were using me in this operation. Well, from that day forward, me and my entire family have been targeted by Multnomah County Sheriff and by Portland Police Sting Operations and by their civilian relatives and their civilian buddies and their goddamn civilian girlfriends. Ever since that day, ever fucking since, Most people that are six-year-old kids don't usually remember things that happened when they're six years old. But I happen to remember that day very clearly. Never for, I never forgot that day. Because for me, it was one of the oddest days of my entire childhood. <clears throat> it's one of those unforgettable days. It was literally my introduction day to the Dunham family, who of which spent years targeting me and my entire family in sting operations. They pretty much embedded themselves into my life and into my family's uh, lives from that day forward. 
And that day, after all, was my introduction day to the Dunham family. And because it was such an odd and unusual day, and because I was so confused by it, I spent a great deal of time pondering that day back in 1971, trying to figure out, why did they do this? Why, why, why did they say they're taking me to park just to take me to this house? And why is this person in a uniform throwing candy bars at us? And, and why is everybody s celebrating after they're done? And why did my mother get all upset when I told her uh, who gave me the candy bars? I was confused by all of it. And because I was confused, I gave it a great deal of thought. I even had dreams about that day, <clears throat> and uh, I gave that deal a great that day a great deal of thought back then. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't understand it because I was just too young. I lacked enough wisdom and vital information to to comprehend what I'm a witness to. I was very confused by it. I gave it a great deal of thought, and because of that, I never forgot it. It was literally burned into my memory because of how much time uh, I spent dwelling on that day, um, looking back on that day. So I, the, my memory of that day is extremely clear. Clear. It's, I can remember it. I'm, I'm like in my 50s now. But I can remember that day so clearly that it's, 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 it's no different than looking back and remembering what happened yesterday for, for, for other people. Um, I can clearly look back on that day because I never forgot it. I was so confused by everything that happened that day that I spent a great deal of time thinking about it, uh, dwelling on it and thinking about it, trying to figure out what happened, what took place. Why was everybody acting so strange, so weird? Of course, I was only six years old. I didn't. My vocabulary was extraordinarily limited. I'm not even in school yet. I didn't even know what the word strange or weird uh, even meant. I didn't even know what those words in 1971 even meant. So I had no way to verbally explain to other people that day. I had no way to explain it because my vocabulary wasn't good enough. Uh, in, in, in early 1972, that's when I found out what the word weird meant. And the moment I learned and discovered what the definition of the word weird means, I immediately associated that word with the Dunham family. Immediately. And I started referring to people in my family and telling people in my family that, yeah, the Dunham family, they're weird. They're weird. Because that was the first word I learned that I could actually use to describe the Dunham family with. And the moment I learned about that word and the, what the, the word meant, I immediately started associating that word with the Dunham family. And I didn't find, and it's ironic, I can remember learning a definition of that word, weird. And it was in early 1972. And uh, the moment I learned what that, weird, that word weird meant, I immediately started using that word Anytime I spoke about the Dunham family, uh, because I thought of them as weird, because that was the only word at that time that I knew of that actually fits the Dunham family, because there's nothing normal about the Dunham family at all. Nothing. Every, anything and everything they did, to me, seemed weird. Um, and ironically, so I, I can remember, I can remember uh, what, learning that word, the definition of that word weird. It was, in, I was just, I just recently turned seven years old. And uh, I was a me, I was finally, you know, I finally, my vocabulary was starting to get better. And I'm understanding more and more words. And as I get older and, and have a better understanding of words and a better understanding as to how to communicate, you know, that was my way of trying to communicate with other people that, you know, the Dunham family are weird. You know, because I, I still didn't know what crime was or covert crime. or I knew nothing about sting operations. I knew nothing about the Multnomah County Sheriff's. I didn't even know what the hell a sheriff even was yet. 
Um, I still didn't know what a sheriff was. I knew what cops were. I knew what cops looked like. Um, I, I knew what police looked like, and I knew what police are, but I knew nothing about the sheriffs. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So when I saw that county sheriff officer in his uniform tossing those candy bars at us in 71, I was completely clueless as to what the fuck he was. But I never forgot what that uniform looked like. And I never forgot what that Multnomah County Sheriff's seal on that camera looked like either. I just didn't know what either of them represented. Ever since uh, the county sheriffs and the Dunham family used me in that operation, from that day forward, me and my entire family have been targeted by sting operations. In the year 2000, I'm in my early 30s. I'm married to my wife, Joan Wager. Uh, we, have three we have three children, all three daughters. And my wife, Joan Wager, got a job as a prep cook at the Multnomah County Jail Kitchen. She was prepping food for prisoners in the Multnomah County Jail. Ever since my wife, Joan Wager, got the job at the Multnomah County Jail Kitchen, my wife was showing signs of having an affair. My wife was showing signs that she no longer loved me anymore. My wife was no longer confiding in me and was actually lying to me, and I was catching her in lies. I'm under the belief now that, gee, our marriage is over, uh, divorce is imminent, and uh, my wife is cheating, and uh, she's no longer confiding in me, and because of this, my guard is up, and I'm no longer confiding in her, and I'm under the belief a divorce is imminent. And I simply chose not to confront my wife, because I didn't want our daughters to suffer from the fights, and I didn't want to be the bad guy in the situation. But my guard is up. I know shit's going on behind my back. I knew my wife's side of the family was turned against me already at this point. Uh, they weren't really trying very hard to hide it. Their attitudes towards me changed ever since my wife got the job at the Multnomah County Kitchen. They're no longer acting as friendly uh, relatives anymore, and they're acting as people that have it out for me. So my guard was up. I'm no longer confiding in my wife, and I'm under the belief a divorce is imminent. My wife, after she worked at that county jail kitchen for a month and a half, uh, the Multnomah County Sheriff told my wife, Joan Wager, to quit her job at the Multnomah County Jail Kitchen to hide her connections with them, and on the very same day that they told my wife, Joan Wager, to quit her job at the county jail kitchen, happens to be the exact same day the Multnomah County Sheriffs filled out a multitude of 72-hour notices to take over the surrounding apartments, surrounding my apartment and my father's apartment, as well as my mother's home. And the same time they did this is also the same time they brought in a double, somebody that they could use to impersonate me with. Now, the day my wife quit her job at the County Joe Kitchen is the exact day the county sheriffs are launching this operation of theirs and targeting me and my side of the family. And it's the exact same day the county sheriffs filled out the 72-hour notices in order to take over the surrounding apartments, surrounding my apartment, my father's apartment, and my mother's home. And it's the exact same day that my wife, Joan Wager, and every member of her side of the family were celebrating by grinning and smirking and laughing and openly celebrating the Multnomah County Sheriff's decision to frame me as a pedophile.
the day my wife quit her job at Canada Kitchen is the same day, right after that, literally, uh, right on the same day, right after my wife quit. That's when every member of my wife's side of the family showed up on my property, at my apartment building, on my property, and they're openly celebrating the Multnomah County Sheriff's decision to set me up as a pedo. They're not outright admitting to it, but this is what they were celebrating. And they weren't offering to tell me what they're celebrating. Now, I outright, I already know shit's going on. I already know my wife's cheating on me. I'm already suspecting foul play of some sort. Um, and I outright asked my wife and everybody in her side of family, gee, what are you guys all celebrating? Because they were openly celebrating on my property in front of my face that day. Now my wife and every member of her side of the family were in a celebration mode and were laughing and grinning and smirking and they started having fun hinting at what they're celebrating. And uh, they were laughing about it and treating it like it was a game, essentially. And they were, they were uh, the hints, the intentional hints that they were giving me was big shit's going on and that this big shit was going to fuck me over, not any of them, but me, and that that's what they're celebrating. Now, those were the hints that they were intentionally trying to give me. So, they were celebrating something and specifically wanted me to know that what they are celebrating is going to be fucking me over in a very big way and that big shit's going on and that, that, and that that's what they're so happy about. That's what they're celebrating. That's what they intentionally wanted me to know with their hints. But throughout the entire course of their hinting, I'm just standing there amongst these people. Uh, I got my, my arms across, and I'm just standing there, not giving any facial expression to let on that I know what's going on or I'm suspecting what is going on, and uh, not giving them any uh, facial indication to give them the impression that I know what's going on. And just stood there and just let them hint. And I was even telling myself, say nothing. We'll just let them hint. The more information I get, the better. So I just stood there and while they just continued on with their celebration. And they just continued hinting. Now, they weren't keeping track of the hints they gave, for one thing. Uh, quite often, they... Uh, like, for instance, I'll give you examples of them not keeping track of the hints. There were times when my, mu my, wife, my wife would go into the apartment uh, to get herself a cup of coffee. And while she's doing that, uh, my wife's sister, Vicki Rosales, and her uh, son, uh, Jesse Rosales, they were giving me hints that my wife was unaware of. And they were hinting and implying that I was going to be set up as a pedo. And then when my wife was out there with my wife Joan Wager is out there with her side of the family. That's when my wife's sister Vicky Rosales would go into my apartment to use the restroom. And while Vicky was my wife's sister Vicky Rosales is in the apartment using the restroom, that's when my wife is giving me some more hints. And she was hinting and applying they're gonna be setting me up as a pedo. So that's an example of how they weren't keeping track of the hints. They were all having fun hinting at everything. They didn't want me to know the details of anything, but they were having fun hinting. Well, they weren't keeping track of the hints, so they ended up giving me a lot more information than they intended to. Now, after a minimum of 45 solid minutes of them openly celebrating the county sheriff's decision to frame me, in my presence, in front of my face, and having fun hinting at everything to my face, uh, my wife's mother, Donna Miner, 
she completely, she didn't notice me standing out there any longer. And she stupidly assumed that I went inside my apartment. And she just started talking about what's going on. And the first thing she said was, she started talking about the county sheriff's taking over the surrounding apartments. And uh, my wife, Joan Wager's sister, Vicki Rosales, she very quickly started speaking over Donna Minor to get her to shut the fuck up. And then reminded Donna Minor that I'm still out there with them. I'm standing right behind her. And that's when Donna Minor very nervously turned and looked in my and glanced in my direction, and she was very nervous uh, when she did that. And I noticed, I noticed that. Now, that was the linchpin information that I needed to know. That pretty much explained everything that was going on. I knew everything at this point. I had more than enough information to know that uh, my wife and her side of the family's fuck buddies in the county sheriffs uh, made the decision that they're going to be setting me up as a pedo to get rid of me. And I already had prior knowledge how the county fucking pedophile sheriffs do this shit to people. And they didn't think I knew. <laughs> I walked away from uh, my wife and her side of the family after Donna Minor blurted out the fact county sheriff's going to be taking over the surrounding apartments. <laughs> I went into my apartment. That should have been enough of a tip-off all by itself for my wife and her side of the family to know that I caught that. But they stupidly thought I didn't catch that. Ironically, as I was walking through the threshold of my doorway and entering my apartment, I could hear uh, my wife's mother, Donna Minor, asking my wife's sister, Vicki Rosales, Do you think he caught that? Did he, did he catch that? And I could hear my wife's sister, Vicki Rosales, out there telling Donna Minor, No, I don't think he caught that. So they stupidly spent fucking 45 minutes hinting at everything and openly celebrating it in front of my face. And then they blurted out the linchpin information that explained everything. Now, if they were hinting that they were using a double, uh, I didn't catch that. They might have been, and I just didn't catch that. Uh, because there were times when they were hinting that multiple people in my wife's side of the family, as well as my wife, were hinting at the same time, and it wasn't easy to keep track of all the hints they were giving, because when multiple people were talking at the same time, it's hard to catch everything. They may have already hinted at the fact that they're going to be bringing in a double. If they did, I didn't notice it. But I already had prior uh, prior knowledge that the Multnomah County Sheriffs, when they frame people as pedos, they use doubles and photogenic photos to do it with. So, I was already under the belief, yeah, they're going to be bringing in a double. Uh, I'm going to have to be on the lookout now for them uh, using a double in the neighborhood. I was already on the lookout for it. And was already expecting it. Now, I had enough information on the day that my wife quit her job at the Multnomah County Jail Kitchen to know that I'm a victim of a police slash county sheriff operation of some sort. Uh, the only thing I really didn't know about this operation yet was the sheer size of it. My initial impression of it the, on the day that my wife quit was, okay, my wife, Joan Wager, and her side of the family's fuck buddies in the Multnomah County Sheriff's uh, decided they're going to get rid of me by setting me up as a pedal. So my initial conservative estimate was two to three bad apples in law enforcement and my wife and everybody on her side of the family who just happened to be on board with it. That was my initial impression of this operation.
In other words, whoever my wife was cheating on me with, and whoever uh, it, whoever in law enforcement that that officer is good buddies with. That's what my initial impression of this operation was. And I already knew their motive. My wife was having an affair, and uh, already understood their. I already knew their mindsets behind it. It's sport. They're grinning about it. They're smirking about it. They're celebrating it. They're having fun hinting at it. Uh, it's sport. So I, pr I pretty much I have more than enough information to know how to prove I'm be going to be set up. And I had more all this information pretty much the day my wife quit. And the day my wife. The day that my wife quit her job at County Joe Kitchen is the day of the launch of this operation. Now, uh, they were in the, they were planning all this out while my wife worked at the County Joe Kitchen. They're launching this operation the day they told my wife to quit. Now, because they blurted out the fact county sheriffs are going to be taking over the surrounding apartments, that means they're going to be evicting neighbors. And I'm now already pre-warned and I'm now expecting it. So the very next morning, at around 9.30 in the morning, um, I got up out of bed before my wife got up, and I started a pot of coffee, and before I didn't even wait for the pot of coffee to finish. I just started a pot of coffee, and then I immediately went outside and looked over at my next-door neighbor's apartment and looked at their door. And lo and behold, there's a 72-hour notice on that door that wasn't there the night before. So now I've just confirmed what I overheard Donna Miner blurting out the night before. I've just now confirmed it. So I decided to take the dogs for a walk so I can scan the rest of the neighborhood to find out, find the other apartments uh, that the county sheriffs are going to be taking over. So I had this I had this whole thing pretty well pegged. I sure as hell wasn't afraid of prosecution. I sure to hell wasn't afraid of court. Um, I knew damn well this was personal, and I knew damn well they treat it like it's a fucking sport, and already knew their motive and their mindsets behind it, and had pretty much the whole thing pegged. Uh, the only error I'm making in uh, guess, uh, guessing uh, or, or recognizing this operation is the sheer size of it. Uh, I thought it was two or three bad apples in law enforcement. No, it's the entire Multnomah County fucking sheriffs in their official fucking capacity, as well as the Portland, the entire Portland Police Department in their official capacity. This was an official operation on their part, and they were targeting not just me, they were targeting every member of my family. At the same time they're slapping the 72-hour notices on the apartments surrounding mine happens to be the same time they're slapping 72-hour notices on the apartments surrounding my father's apartment and are doing the same to where at, at where my mother lived in her home. Now, I was, I'm not aware yet that they're targeting my family. I'm under the impression I'm the only target of it. And because of that, I was very gung-ho in hanging in there to prove it. And I knew exactly how to prove it. And uh, I thought, well, gee, it's just my ass on the line. Oh, I'm so not going to quiver. So I was very gung-ho about hanging in there to prove it. But in, the process, but in the process of proving it, I discovered that there's more, and there's more, and more, and more, and more people that either, joined, either joined into it or were already involved in it, and that I was just unaware yet. Uh, it was two weeks after my wife quit that I discovered the double 
that they brought in. And I sure as hell wasn't surprised by that. I was completely expecting that. Um, the only surprise I actually got in this entire uh, in, in this entire ordeal, the one and only surprise I got was they were targeting every member of my family, my side of the family. That was the only surprise I got. The fact that they were setting me up as a pedo, the fact that they're bringing in a double, the fact that my wife and everybody on her side of the family was on board with it, uh, the fact that it was county sheriffs that made this decision to do this and was funding it all and, and it was county sheriffs directing it all, uh, none of that surprised me at all. What su the only surprise I got was the sheer size of it and the fact that they were targeting every member of my family. That was the only surprise. Now, when I found out they're targeting every member of my family, uh, by this time, I'm now aware, okay, my initial estimate of two to three bad apples in law enforcement is way off because it's actually everybody in fucking law enforcement and anybody and everybody connected to law enforcement that's involved in it. <coughs> to one degree or another degree. And that there was just way too damn many people that joined into it. So many people that joined into it, in fact, that I was now under the belief that, gee, uh, hanging in there to prove it isn't going to, is not going to get me any help at all. As a matter of fact, they'll just cover up my evidence and then murder me off is what they'll do because there's just too damn many people that joined into it. <sighs> my family has, me and my family have been victimized by the Multnomah County Sheriff's ever since I was six years old in sting operations. And throughout the entire time they targeted me and my family, uh, they were using sting tactics to frame other people as well as me and people in my family. And when they and they were even poisoning me and my family. <coughs> um, there's nobody in Portland, Oregon. There's nobody in. Uh, the city of Portland, there's nobody in the state of Oregon, there is nobody in the United States of America that takes complaints on county sheriff, Port, uh, county sheriff police sting operations. Nobody takes complaints on it. Not even attorneys. Any and all attorneys I call, they just hang up. They just hang up. They will not, nobody takes complaints on county sheriff police sting operations at all. Now this was a very personal operation on their part. And ironically in the year 2000 when they recruited my wife and her side of the family into the sting operation to set me up as a pedo, uh, the Monoma County Sheriff's brought in the Dunham family who have a very long history of targeting me and my family in sting operations, and they have a very long history of using doubles and photogenic photos in sting operations, and they have a long history of being poisoners. In the year 2000, the county sheriffs took over the surrounding departments and were targeting every member of my family. They had my wife and her side of the family targeting me in the sting operation. Uh, the Monoma County Sheriff were using their uh, sting ops to terrorize and harass my father, who lived alone at the time. And the Monoma County Sheriff was using the devil they brought in to terrorize and to uh, get my mother into incriminating situations. They were actively using that devil to target my mother. And because this is very personal, and because the Monoma County Sheriffs have a history of this, and because, for the most part, it's sport to county sheriffs and their civilian sting ops to do this shit to people, they brought in the Dunham family in the year 2000 in this operation. And the Dunham family were specifically targeting my children. They were specifically targeting my 